Hey everybody, welcome to Bestie Book Reviews. I'm here with my bestie, Mandy. And I'm here with my bestie, Jessica. So it's the end of August. So this is going to be our August wrap up. Uh, so this will be where we go over our top 10 books of the month of August, uh, the top five for both Mandy and myself. We start at number five, we work our way up to number one. That we do. That we do. <laughs> But and what do we tell I made them? Decisions. I made decisions, so <gasps> I don't have any. Ties. I was a little worried. It was, was hard. I really yeah. wanted to have like four top one. Five. Yeah. My five actually could have been my top one, but mm -hmm. Jessica's mean and forced me to pick. I did. So I am horrible. Please hit the subscribe button. We're giving away free books. We love to do that. We like to talk about books here, and I think that we're fun. <laughs> yes, I think we're a blast. So hit that subscribe button so you can be entered to win our free books. You can follow us on Instagram for an extra entry. And now let's just dive into our August wrap up. Mm -hmm. So let's tell me wrap about, it up. Let's wrap it up. So what were your stats for August? Well, my stats for August were uh, 38 books read. Mm -hmm. Thank you, DNF series. I was going to say, thank you, DNF series. But what was interesting about this, 15 of those were five stars. Seriously? Yes. And I had to pick five. Hard, huh? It was hard, hard times here. Yeah. Yeah. So I read 48 books in the month of August to thank you, DNF series. And I had eight five star reads. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that says. I'm just, I had a lot of force. So did you get, you got a new pen from the package mm -hmm. that we got, right? Yeah. The one that says, did you get the unapologetic romance reader? Mm -hmm. I love this pen. I love the color. I mean, it matches my nails right now. Yeah. But the way it writes and everything, it's like my favorite pen now. Like the K Webster. So thank pens. you again. Okay, I'll check them out it this week. Feels like it's a like a almost like a jelly type gel e gel mm -hmm. type. Yeah, we're talking way too much about pens. People are leaving okay. left and right. Okay. <laughs> All right. So Here let's we go. start. Let's start with the book. I am easily okay. distracted. I know it's okay. And it's been a long day today. It was our first day back to teaching. So yes. in the classroom. So well, with, yeah, my first day with students. And mm -hmm. then Jessica's mm -hmm. like, let's record. <sighs> okay, let's get this done so Mandy can go chill after teaching little ones all day long. So all right. So coffee. I'm good. You're good. Okay. So I'm wide awake. Okay. A little too awake. Your number five book of the month. Thank you. Okay. My number five book of the month is Cora Riley's By Frenzy, I Ruined. I read this yes. one last week. I re the audio just came out. I really like this one. So this is about uh, Aurora and Nevio. Aurora is the daughter of Fabiano. And then Nevio is um, Serafina and Remo's son. And they, they've grown up together because uh, Fabiano and his family live next door to Remo and his family. So these kids have always been together. Aurora is kind of like a little skater chick, you know, she's a little bit of a tomboy. Um, but as she gets older, she kind of has a thing for Nevio. Nevio is the boy who is out doing things that he really shouldn't be doing. He's getting into trouble. He's, um, you know, schmurdering people. So he's really not not the best but they get thrown into a situation there's there's a situation that happens between the two of them that starts a relationship it's not the best situation then they get thrown into another situation where he has to depend on her there needs to be some growth here but i still i i really liked it i liked the bad boy i did and i loved being back in the kimura world um i loved seeing i we saw um people from the um italian familia we we saw they are the New York Familia. We, we were back in Nevada. I just, I like being back in the world. So that was my number five. What was your number five? My number five is dark. Ooh. Darkity dark. Okay. What is it? Guess. Did I read it too? Yes. Where there's a will? Yep. Yep. <laughs> 
Okay. Okay. So my number five book, which again, my top five could all interchange and be number one. And Jessica's mean for making me pick, but at least I narrowed it down to five. Yeah. So it is Where There's a Will by Ember Hughes. This is a dark cowboy romance. And we have Kenley and Colton. They have grown up together. Basically, they've known each other th since they were like seven and eight years old. They were best friends. And then, you know, as they became teenagers, became involved with each other. And they, like Colton was in love. He was ready to play on his whole life out with Kenley. And she abruptly breaks up with him. And he's devastated. And so he graduates and he flees. Leaves the state. Doesn't come back. And we fast forward 10 years later and Colton gets a call that his father has passed away and he goes home to help his sister take care of everything because something was going on with their dad. He has a bunch of debt. He signed over things that he shouldn't have. And there's a lot of confusion about what's happening. And so he has to go home to help her. And he is going to see Kenley again, obviously. And this takes a very dark turn as soon as he gets home. There are parts of this that were hard to read because Kenley has lived a very difficult life. And so I will leave it at that. Mm -hmm. Can't say much more because there's so much you don't want to give away. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Fantastic read. Mm -hmm. um, I ordered the book from her from Vegas. So I don't have that book here yet. You just have to take yours to Vegas. I didn't realize, I didn't even think about that. Mm -hmm. I will be bringing this with me then and asking yeah. her if she will sign it. Yeah, exactly. She'll do that. She will do that. Yeah. If okay. she's two people, does the limit count? <laughs> Can we bring? Because like, I have all my Daisy Jane books to bring too. Uh, yeah. Um, okay. I think, I think we could always hunt her down after the fact if we had to and that is how we ended <laughs> up on dateline ladies and gentlemen daisy i promise we're not gonna hunt you down okay ready yes for number four okay so book number four for me is moon's promise by jamie bagley this is a part this is book number 11 in her uh, last writer series i love the last writers as kinky as they are i love the last writers uh, but this is about Larissa and Moon. So Larissa has just moved to Tree Point to the little Kentucky town that this, these last writers have their MC club at and or MC at this is MC not MC club. But anyhow, that's where their their home base is and she goes to a party one night at the clubhouse even though she's not supposed to be there because unless it's like their big kinky Friday night parties, they're not supposed to have people from outside of the club at the, the clubhouse for parties but that happens her sister's really into moon and so she um goes to this party to help because her sister really just wants to get with moon and she's not supposed to be upstairs but she has to go to the bathroom really bad so one of the wives lets her go upstairs <laughs> to go to the bathroom <laughs> don't laugh and she sees something kinky going on freaks her out she ends up going like hiding in a bedroom while moon is in there and he's like three sheets to the wind um, he's, he asked her to come, he thinks she's one of the club hoes. He asked her to come take off her, his shoes. Um, and she pretends like she doesn't want to correct him, but she ends up getting herself into a situation that she can't get herself out of when he thinks that she's one of the club hoes. Cause it's like pitch black in the room, which leads to him not knowing who was in his room, trying to figure out who was in his room. She doesn't want to tell cause she doesn't want to get in trouble, but then she finds out she's pregnant and, um, things just snowball from there. So. I loved it. I loved it so much because he has no clue who was in his room. He knows somebody was in there, but he cannot figure out who it was. There's so much more to the story. It's a very long book, but it is so good. Okay. Okay. What's your number four? Well, I went dark. Now I'm going in the opposite direction. <laughs> okay. Baseball romance. I'm All right. Play along. Mm -hmm. And I think I've been saying Liz Tomford's name wrong. Is it Tom what? Ford? I just think it's, I don't know. I always I heard it as Liz Tomford, but I don't know. You could ask her. That's how I said it. But I'm pretty sure when we did the interview with Samantha Britmore, she pronounced it differently. And I was like, oh dear, I've been saying that wrong this whole time. 
We can ask her when we see her again. I have to figure this out. I, I'll okay. go back and watch the video. Okay. And speaking of watching the video, Samantha Brentmore's interview will be out on Wednesday. It is hilarious. Make sure you tune in to watch it. And it really will come out this Wednesday. Apparently, I messed that up last week, mm -hmm. but I blame Jessica because she switched the schedule. We always Kidding. have an amazing time with our interviews, but this yes. one, I've never laughed so hard. Yes, it was. So. It was really great. So the reason I'm bringing up Samantha Brentmore is because she is the narrator for Play Along, along with Jacob Morgan, and the narration is fantastic for this. Okay. Are you going to stay with me All the right. whole time? Nope. I'm going to let you talk about it now. Okay. So, <clears throat> oh, my book closed on me. Play <laughs> Along is book number four in the Windy City series and this is about kennedy and isaiah we saw a little glimpse of both of them in the previous book which was kai's book kai and isaiah are brothers and in this book we find out that isaiah has just really been in love with kennedy forever and he has just been waiting for his opportunity to go for her and kennedy works um she's a physical therapist like the sports doctor with the team but the head doctor did not want to hire her because she's female and obviously he couldn't just do that because she's female so he hires her but he doesn't allow her to do anything he gives her all like the horrible jobs that interns and other people should be doing and so she's just not allowed to work to her potential and so she's sticking it out for one more year and then she's going to be able to land her dream job so she needs everything to go very smoothly so nothing screws this up well her and isaiah end up in vegas at separate functions but end up running into each other they get drunk and they get married and it gets blasted all over the media because isaiah is a very famous baseball player and they get called in and basically she's about to lose her job and so now we have marriage of convenience <laughs> happening mm -hmm. here but we have Isaiah who's in love with her. So absolutely love this one. It is fantastic. And I heard from lots of people that this was their favorite book in the series. And when I read it, I'm like, oh, I can see why all of them are great. I love the first one, but this is definitely good too. So it's always great when you read a series that starts off with like the first book being amazing. And then every book just feels better when the first book was already great. Yep. Yep. Okay. The neighbor's dogs are being noisy outside. So sorry if you guys can hear it, but they're very noisy dogs. Anyhow, so book number three for me is Owen by BJ Alpha. This is the third book in her storm series. So excited for this one and it did not disappoint. So this is obviously about Owen and Leia. So Owen is Leia's brother's best friend. He's in his 30s, and Leia just turns 18. And on her 18th birthday, like, there's always been an attraction, or there has been an attraction for a few years. Um, there's, they sleep together on her 18th birthday. He might not be 30 at this point. He might be in his later 20s, but I know when their book's going, it, he's definitely in his 30s. So he sleeps there, takes her V-card. A few minutes later, she comes downstairs, and he pulls the most dickish move ever, and breaks her heart. She decides she's going to finally, she's going to go to Florida and she's going to pursue her career, um, go to school and, and just get away from him at that point, which is part of the reason why he pulled the dickish move because he knew that she's, she's not like, he's not good enough for her is how he's always felt. So she goes away. She meets a guy, she gets married. She finds out she's pregnant. And she comes home and tells everybody he's there for the dinner when that happens. And he's like, oh, heck no. So he's like, you know, comes to her and he's like, that is my baby. And you are mine. And I will do whatever it takes to get you back and to get you, to, to keep you. Which then, you know, things happen. Um, th th things go. Things happen. I loved this book so much. Owen was willing to do anything. And I know it sounds like there's cheating, but I promise you there's not. What's book number three for you? Bitter Rival by Emery Rose Andrews. All right. So we have Daisy and Beckett here. <clears throat> and they have not seen each other since they were younger. 
Daisy and Beckett are were step siblings, but Beckett has a very he's was estranged from his father. His father has passed away, and th- he left a will and he left his vineyard to both of them. But there's stipulations that Daisy and him have to live at the vineyard and work there for three months. And then once that happens, they gain ownership of the vineyard. But again, they have to share it. So Daisy comes there to live there. And so does Beckett. And these two, like, they're both there fairly reluctantly, right? These two are like the definition of grumpy sunshine. Daisy is always, he feels like she's a little flighty. And Beckett is like a Mr. Serious and kind of unhappy a little bit with how like serious he is. And so these two both have a lot of baggage that they're bringing with them to this vineyard. There's a lot for them to navigate through. But through this slow burn, we start to see so much character change and development. And it's just, oh, I was so engrossed in their story that I didn't even really feel like a slow burn if that, if you like get what I'm saying there. I love their story so much. It was so incredible. And if you like Beauty and the Beast at all, like make sure you read read the dedication because this is all about the beast getting his princess. All right. Well, my number two book, book number two for the month for me, I, there's no, I, you already friggin' talked about it. So I did. Yeah. You can just hold that up one more time. (laughs) <laughs> this is number two for you that's number two for me I really between number two and number one I really debated like I went back and forth quite a bit because I feel like they could be interchangeable I loved this book so much I messaged mm-hmm. Daisy and I was like oh my god like you have solid gold here when the dark romance community finds out about it yeah it's so good so yeah that's number two for me okay okay what's book number two for you Book number two for me. Well, hold on while I grab my notes really fast. Sorry, uh, I didn't even. <laughs> I usually move my bookmark in my book when you're talking. When I'm talking, yeah, yeah. All right, book number two for me is "The Summer I First Saw You" by Elizabeth O'Rourke. Okay. Okay. So this is Daisy and Harrison's book. Harrison and Liam, who last the last book was, this is all kind of about their friend group. So Liam and Harrison have been best friends since they were younger. And Liam has an older sister, Bridget, who had a child when she was fairly young, and that would be Daisy. And so Harrison has known Daisy since she was in diapers. He used to tell her, like, don't eat sand, that sort of thing. And we have Daisy who some things have happened and she needs somewhere to crash. She's 21 and it's the summer, you know, uh, and she's before she goes back to college in the fall, she needs somewhere to stay because some stuff has happened, which I won't give any of that away. So she goes to Harrison's beach house because everybody in the friend group believes that Harrison, even though he's recently divorced, has this girlfriend in LA that he's obsessed with. And so he's not going to be home. So she goes there and guess what? She finds a very drunk Harrison who is not doing well. So Daisy tells him, hey, you're going to let me stay here or I'm going to make a phone call to my uncle and let him know that you're not actually in L.A. and things are not actually going that well. And so this is the two of them kind of living together, trying to figure some stuff out, but then feelings definitely start happening. And then you get a very forbidden love happening because this is like his best friend's niece. He's known her since she was born. Kind of like throws that for a little bit of a loop. I love this so much. There was angst there what this whole this book was just perfection i've loved the whole series but this was such a great way to end it loved it so much i highly recommend the summer series and when you finish book five you can sign up for her newsletter and you get the novella the summer i married you and it oh i just loved seeing everybody together so it was wonderful good okay okay are you ready for my number one? No. I'd like well, to take a nap. 
Why so would I not be ready for it? I have no idea. I don't know My, either. Book number one took me on a wild ride. There were ups, there were downs. The author broke my heart. She mended my heart. Like it was, it was quite the book and it had been a long time coming. So my oh, book number I, one. What are we talking <laughs> about? about? <laughs> book number one should come as no surprise to you guys that it is Heart of Frost and Scars by Pam Godwin. Um, and like I said before, when you guys pick this up, you're not going to be ready at all. Like there is nothing to prepare you for the things that happened in this book. Um, there were several messages that I sent to Pam and I was like, you better fix it. You had better make this better. I don't know that I trust you. <laughs> so um, there was also, there's also something that happens in here and it's this huge, huge ending to a chapter that is like huge, cliffhanging huge. And for those of you who are reading the book, you're not going to have to wait five days till she sends the next set of chapters to know what happens. I had to do that. It was one of those things where I was like, <gasps> and then nothing for days. So anyhow, um, <laughs> this book definitely made me older. So this is obviously the third book to Frankie's story in the Frozen Fate trilogy that takes place in Alaska in the wilderness. This is the conclusion to this book. It is a why choose. Um, and there's, when you get to the end, there's a teaser for a book that will be coming out later. And that will also be a part of this whole series. So I'm dying for that, but I, I can't say anything else because this is a trilogy, right? So this is the third book and there are so many twists and turns and things that happen. All your questions get answered in here. Um, I even had someone messaging me that like the day it came out this month and she was like, oh my God, like asking all these questions and she was only 30% in and I felt like how I am with you where I'm like, you've got to keep reading. But she's like, but just tell me. And I'm like, I don't want to ruin the experience for you. If I grew, grow, grew gray hairs reading this book, so should you. So read them gray, read them gray hairs. Grow them gray hairs reading this book. <laughs> so it's epic. It is epic. Pam was at her best with this. So yeah. Okay. What's book number one for you? Alone With You by Allie Martinez. Okay. Okay. So this is a romantic, like suspense thriller type book. Please check triggers. That is very important when reading this book. So when I started writing my review, I was like, not me over here, ugly crying, trying to type this out. Very emotional book that is right here. So we have Truett. Truett has been a recluse and he does not leave his home except for on Wednesdays when he walks down the street to the diner because he has a daughter and he's trying to keep some sort of routine happening. And one day he discovers that the diner is closed. It's been bought by somebody else and he kind of freaks out a little bit. And Gwen appears and it turns out Gwen is the new owner of the diner and Gwen and Truett knew each other. They've known knew each other like 18 years ago. We don't know how, why, what has gone on, but something pretty serious has gone on between the two of them. So I can't really tell you much more about this story without giving things away. I was consumed with the need to know why everything was happening and what was going on. And I just like devoured this story. It is a story of love and heartbreak and second chances, not only at love, but at life. So read this, you will not be disappointed. I don't think you'd be disappointed reading any of these books yeah. in our top five. So yeah, you have nine yeah. really good books here yes. to go read. Amazing books. So, all right guys, so that's it. That is a wrap on August. And that is a wrap on summer. <laughs> we didn't have much of a summer maybe we'll get one in the fall who knows I, i'm not sure here so i know where i live it's been raining and raining and raining and then today we went back to like the kids first day back to school and it's sunny it was out. sunny i know like, nice. i went through the drive through at starbucks a few days ago and I, they had all their pumpkin spice stuff out and i was like I know. what the I hell happened <laughs> And I got up to the window and our friends work at our local Starbucks and she was like, what? No pumpkin spice. And I was like, no, give me my refresher. Absolutely not. It is not time for pumpkin spice. But apparently now the refresher is away. No. no. Oh, I was going to say, I no. didn't think those went away. She was just like, how come no pumpkin spice? I'm like, because it's August. That's why. Oh, I'm But 
now that Mandy and I have done our official August wrap up, you guys can all go get your pumpkin spice. I got a pumpkin spice think. this morning before work. Did you? Did you? I all right. I love okay. pumpkin spice. I know you do. You like pumpkin in general because you would make us go to talk to not talk about to uh, Dairy Queen Dairy every Queen. year and for sit in long, long lines to get you a pumpkin milkshake all the time. Yeah. We grew up in a very secluded area and like Dairy Queen was like, it was when we grew up there, it was the only fast food option, like out of fast food chains. And like, there was no, there was no other, there's no like fast food. It was the only option. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, guys. That is it. Pumpkin. Go pumpkin. Right. Yeah. Go pumpkin. So make sure you check back. On Mondays, Thursdays, and Saturdays for a new video from, wow, I'm so yeah. excited about pumpkin, I can't even talk. <laughs> so Mondays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, we have new videos, so make sure you check back for those. Hit that notification button so you always know when new videos drop, including those surprise ones that we do. And just an FYI, those are going to kind of slow down a little bit as we get back into fall. We still have some great author interviews coming up for you. They just won't be like every Wednesday, like we kind of got into the habit for summer, yeah. but as we get into fall and we have lots of videos planned that are going to be fun and exciting. So make sure you yeah. check back for those. Yep. Thanks for watching guys. We'll see you in the next video.